What's going on, guys? RDAP Dan, Federal Prison Time Consulting. Hope you guys are all having a great week so far. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a few things that many of you should know. So I'm going to call this top three tips. And maybe these aren't the top three, but these are three that are important. And there's uh, other tips that will probably come up over the next few weeks. But we'll give everybody a few minutes to join us here. And we'll kick this off in a few minutes. Hope everybody had a great New Year's. If you're out there doing your New Year's resolutions, <laughs> hope you stick to them. Uh, we didn't really do much. We kind of hung out, went to bed kind of early, and then got up early in the morning and, and went and had breakfast and took the scooters for a ride. If you haven't done so, also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, also, you can, as you see in the, uh, the bottom left hand of your screen, you should see book your free consultation. There's a link in the description of the video. So if you would like to book a free consultation with us to find out what we might be able to do for you, whether it be sentence reduction, personal narratives, reference letters, uh, preparing for your pre-sentence report, assistance for RDAP, uh, it could be various things, compassionate release, a substance abuse evaluation, maybe you've already been sentenced and you've already done your pre-sentence report and you were not fully disclosing your information about your substance abuse to the probation officer. Maybe your attorney told you not to talk about it. Whatever the reason is, if you would like to book a free consultation to find out how we might be able to help, link is in the description. Also, um, follow us on Twitter. We've got, uh, we put information on Twitter. We've been updating our Twitter account a little bit uh, more often now. Uh, there's a link in the description for that as well. If you'd like to click directly on that, follow us on Twitter. We're pretty much on all social media. Um, Instagram, there's not a, Instagram is more like personal stuff, but you're more than welcome to go follow on Instagram, RDAP Dan, usually just posting stuff about the dogs and, you know, daily routine type stuff. And don't forget to come follow us on the web at federalprisontime.com. All these links are also in the description of the video as well. So don't forget to check that out. And we'll just leave this one up here. But yeah, today we're talking about top three tips that, uh, that I wish I knew before going to federal prison. And I knew many of you wish that you knew it. And maybe some of you, and this is also before sentencing. So before sentencing, before going to prison, these are kind of what I think are three very important different phases of information that is really good to know before you make some of these mistakes or you learn the hard way. And this video is actually being prepared today and coming to you guys because uh, today we had a very busy, busy day with a lot of consultations and these topics kept coming up throughout different parts of the consultations, different various issues that are all very common throughout the majority of the people that we talk to. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, if you haven't done so, make sure you head over to DOC TV 813. Uh, go visit Josh's channel. I think he just released part two of my interview or might have been part three. Uh, we did an interview of my story of uh, the whole pill clinic issue from prior to getting indicted, to going to prison, to becoming a consultant, kind of talking about the whole journey there. So that's uh, DOC TV 813, Josh's channel over there in Tampa, Florida. So make sure you check that out because it's a lot of fun doing these interviews. All right, so we'll kind of jump into today's video. And the first, number one, what we're going to talk about here, the first thing that we're going to talk about that I think is really important for many of you, and this is going to apply to the majority of you that are, are in your early phases uh, maybe you just fell under indictment, you're under a federal investigation, and you're going through the point of either getting an attorney or hiring an attorney. Uh, so it's real important to really pay attention to this and understand what might be able to happen. Cheryl, thank you for listening from Massachusetts. Awesome. So tip number one, we're going to talk about uh, federal appointed attorneys versus private attorneys. And for those of you that are interested, we do have a video that is also posted in the description of this. And I think I can go ahead and drop that for you in the uh, in the live chat. Let's see here. Let's grab it for you right here. So if you're interested in watching, I did a whole video on this topic a while back. So if you'd like to watch the video on there. Uh, you can watch that later. There's also a link in the description of the video. So many of you are going through the process right now where you're like, I need to hire an appointed or I need to hire a, a private attorney because the federal attorney just isn't getting the job, jo getting the job done, job done. Can't talk tonight. And this comes from a lot of, uh, misbelief where 
maybe we're comparing it to what we've seen on the state side, right? State side, you've got your public defenders and usually the horror stories we hear in public defenders, we've heard public pretenders, all kinds of horror stories about this. And the reality is in the state side, it's very, very, or the federal side, it's very different. You're not getting a brand new attorney that's out of school that doesn't really know what they're doing that's overbooked overworked in the federal system you're either going to get somebody that's working directly for like the uh the federal defender's office or you're going to get a uh, a private attorney that takes cases from the the federal government and it's real important to understand that there's usually not a whole big difference when you're doing this the reason why i say this is many times we talk to our clients and they've got private attorneys I would say half of them have private attorneys, the other half have appointed attorneys. And we hear the same complaints, we hear the same pros, we hear the same cons. Uh, the attorney's not calling me back, they didn't tell me about this, they didn't tell me about that. Uh, it seems like when I call them, when I hang up with them, it feels like I have more answers than questions, or more questions than answers. So it, there's a lot of uh, misconception of what you think you're gonna get when you hire a private attorney. Uh, my case, I had a federally appointed attorney initially, and when my plea agreement was first offered, my plea deal was first offered, a uh, plea to information, which means trying to forego indictment, they offered me a plea deal. And I didn't want to take it because the plea deal was going to carry a prison sentence. It was going to carry up to 60 months. So I'm just thinking, well, this is because I have a federally appointed attorney. And if I had a private attorney, I would be getting better service, more one-on-one. -on -one. They could do things that the federally appointed attorney couldn't do. And this is what went through my mind. Um, so... I got rid of my appointed attorney, who is Dennis O'Brien, who looking back now is a very good attorney. And I hired another attorney out of uh, Savannah, Georgia. Going through the whole process, make the story short, guys, I ended up with the same deal. There was no difference. And you might think, well, that was your situation, Dan, but that could have been an isolated incident. Okay, could have been an isolated incident. However, this is the same thing I hear from all the defendants that I talk to, whether it's clients or people that are booking consultations. Um, you remember, we've been doing this now since 2015. Uh, we've dealt with thousands of individuals, uh, some clients, some we've just been able to consult and give some information to. And I hear the same thing over and over and over again, many times where they wish they had hired or they just dealt with a, with a federally appointed attorney. Now, if you've got you know, finances out the yin yang and, and it's no money is not an issue for you, then yeah, you could probably afford to hire best of the best. But when I talked to a defendant and he hired a private attorney for five grand or 10 grand or 20 grand, and they're in a payment plan, you're not getting a top notch federal private attorney for five, 10, 20 grand. A good federal private attorney is probably going to run in the neighborhood of starting around 50 grand. Now, I'm not going to say there aren't some deals out there um, where maybe you've got a really good deal or a hookup or somebody knows somebody and you're, you have yourself a, 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 a private attorney for a fraction of what somebody else might pay. But for most of you, a private attorney is going to cost a lot of money if you're getting high quality attorney. Um, now for those of you that can't afford it and you're dealing with a federally appointed attorney, that federally appointed attorney is probably going to be just as good as a high priced private attorney. Uh, so where, what am I saying right here is I'm saying that in most cases, an appointed attorney is probably going to be a much better bet than a low cost private attorney. Okay. And case today that I spoke to situation was, uh, spoke to a guy or no, it was a woman, spoke to a woman today in a consultation and she's already sentenced <laughs> and her attorney basically told her, and I'm not going to say the name of the prison or anything, but uh, the state she lives in, the attorney told her she was going to go to a state prison to a low security prison there, which was for men only. It was a state facility prison, wasn't even a federal prison. She's a federal, federal client. Um, all the motions that she was filing, that her attorney was filing, were getting rejected because they were filed uh, inaccurately. So it sounds like that this attorney had not had a lot of federal experience. When you're dealing with the federal system and you have a federally appointed attorney, the good thing is, is these guys are usually well equipped. They're they're up on their they're taking extra classes. They're the courses they got to do, the credentials they need to maintain in order to keep where they're at. They're usually much more equipped in the federal system than the average private attorney, because a lot of private attorneys dabble in state and feds, probably more state cases. 
And a lot of these guys, you'll look them up and it's like DUI, it's it's litigation that, litigation this. It's not a lot of like criminal defense federal cases. So you're like, oh, this attorney looks fantastic. They have all of these really good reviews. But if you look at what their main area of practice is, a lot of times it's not as a federal criminal defense attorney. It's in state stuff where it's like speeding tickets and things like this, where it's show up to court, pay a little bit of money and you walk away victorious. Well, you're dealing in a completely different animal when you're dealing with the federal system. So do your homework, maybe book yourself a free consultation because uh, that can really kind of say a lot in what you're going to be dealing with, especially if finances are hard to come by. Don't go broke getting an appointed a, or a, a, a private attorney because you may not need it. And it, in many cases, won't do you any uh, any good more so than what you were going to get with the appointed attorney. And even in some other cases, you actually may be hurting yourself and getting lesser of a service by going the private route. So to private attorneys out there, this is no knock against you guys, but you know, some will, some won't. So again, we have a video that's all posted on that. If you want to go take a look at that, we have a video here and it's titled federal appointed attorney versus private attorney. I posted a link in the live chat. There's also a link in the description of the video. So if you're watching this on the replay, go in the description of the video, you'll see it uh, right after the paragraph, you'll see that, that video. Um, okay, great. So moving on, moving on. Let's go to the next section here. Next section, let me read some comments. Uh, Juan, what's going on, Juan? How are you doing? My federal appointed attorney was great. He told me about RDAP, also about Dan. Awesome to him. Anybody that talks about RDAP, Dan, they must be like cream of the crop. It doesn't get any better than that. So uh, uh, D. Sylvia, how are you doing? My PSR made all the difference. Absolutely. Tom Lynch, are you required to reimburse the appointed attorney after the case? Uh, no, you are not. You are not because you are entitled to uh, to an attorney to defense when you're uh, to counsel, when you're dealing with the federal system, usually the state system too. Many times in the state system, you're not required to pay back. It will usually be waived by the judge unless you can afford it. Uh, but no, in the federal system, you are not required to pay it back. There may, you know, there may be now, now unless they could prove you lied about your income or something like that, maybe then. But in most situations, no. Um, De Silvia, my attorneys were amazing but they were expensive. So you kind of see where she's going. She did have amazing attorneys. I've spoken, uh, D was one of our clients. I spoke to her attorneys and she did have very good attorneys who were also very willing to think outside of the box. Um, they weren't know-it-alls, which makes a difference when you're dealing with your attorneys. So, but she said, uh, a very, very, uh, something important she said right there is they were very expensive. So you don't need to tell us what you paid D, but if you want to share the cost of your private attorney, just to give people an idea of what it costs for a good private attorney. And if you can't afford what D's number was, you may want to consider going the appointed route because you're not getting a just at a school public defender. All right. So moving on, moving on. Also want to make you guys aware it's a brand new year. We've got, it's getting cold again with cold, cold weather, lots of inmates that are uh, in prison right now. Some are clients, some aren't. These are guys that could use some extra commissary items like uh, um, hygiene products, some warm clothes. So if you want to donate, we uh, we do accept donations. You can do it. Uh, we do cash app and all that stuff too. I just didn't post the links on here like a fool. But if you want to donate, there's a link in the description. I also just posted it there. Uh, you can do donate to us through PayPal. It's just uh, paypal.me forward slash Dan. And you can send as little as a dollar or as much as a million dollars, whatever you want. Every penny that's donated, none of it goes to us. Uh, PayPal takes their fee and the rest, we send it off to inmates. And many times we've even made videos showing you what we do with this care packages, uh, core links, sending them letters, sending them hygiene products, putting money on their books, helping out with some of their families. So if you're in a, in a giving mood, feel free, donate whatever you want. If it makes it easier, I can drop a link for you also. So you can grab that link in here. Um, I will put it in the live chat because there's plenty of people that would love to have that assistance. There you go. Boom. Dropped that. Um, also, don't forget, if you would like to book your free consultation, there is a link in the description of the video. Uh, book your free consultation with us. Find out if there's something that we might be able to do for you. Uh, Joe Joanne Kerr. 
Hey, y'all, hit the, there you go. Hit the like button. We're almost to 10,000 subs, guys. We're getting closer and closer and closer. Um, we're going to be pushing YouTube a lot harder in 2022. I took a break from it last year. We got so busy with just working on clients and everything else. And just, it gets exhausting making content because it does take a lot of time to prepare this stuff. But as software is getting easier and I've got a better setup now, it's making it a little bit easier. So thank you for that, Joanne. Much appreciated, guys. All right. Topic number two, guys. Topic number two. This one is RDAP information. This is very important as well because a lot of times um, people just don't get into RDAP based on technicalities. RDAP, the Residential Drug Abuse Program, and feel free to go over to our website. There's a link in the description of the video where you can hop over and you can actually view this page that I'm on right here. And uh, we have all we have all information. It's all about RDAP. Uh, does the RDAP benefit state prisoners? You know, just everything about RDAP uh, guidelines to RDAP qualifying. What's not going to qualify you? Uh, but basically, what the key point to take away from this video is going to be is preparation, preparation, preparation. If you are interested in RDAP, a feel free to book a consultation. We can talk to you about it. But number two or B, B is you need to make sure that during your pre-sentence interview, and I'm pissing off a lot of prison consultants right now because I'm giving away freebies that people charge for. Um, if, uh, if, if you're interested in getting into RDAP and you have substance abuse, now I am not qualified to determine whether or not you have substance abuse or not, but I can tell you if you're drinking alcohol on any type of regular basis, if you were using marijuana on any type of regular basis, if you had prescription pills, even if they were prescribed, if you were taking, you know, Percocets or Oxys or uh, I think even Xanax and uh, Adderall might qualify. I'm not positive. But if you were taking any of this, even prescribed to you and you were using this and and also another key point, you got to remember it's within 12 months prior to your instant offense, the rest of your instant offense or the indictment. So if you were arrested today or you're indicted today, RDAP qualifications are going to be from today and 12 months back. So if you had a substance abuse four years ago and you got clean, you've been clean for four years and then got in trouble, RDAP's not going to be in the cards for you. Or if you developed a substance abuse problem after your indictment, maybe you became an alcoholic after being indicted. That also is going to kind of mess up your qualification. So the 12 month window is real important that you that you know that that's when you were using or drinking or whatever your issue was that was within that time frame. Uh, also, if you don't want to check out uh, our website because you're like, oh, I don't want to read. That's too much to read, Dan. We live in 2022. I've got the mind of a goldfish. You got to feed it to me. I want to see it in segments and gold nuggets. You can also pop over to our YouTube channel. Wow, look at that blinking face. Jeez, I could have found a better picture to post up there. But uh, we got a video. What's going on, YouTube? Art App Dan here. And Happy this Friday to everybody. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week. So that video is all about RDAP. It's a Q&A about RDAP, substance abuse. So it gives you that's kind of everything you need to know about RDAP in that video. We'll so definitely feel free to, to check out us. that video because that Make could sure give you quite a bit of information, so guys. This time to go ahead and pause that. Um, also on our website... If you go to, um, we got up here, you see RDAP FAQs. There's a whole Q&A on RDAP as well on the website. So federalprisontime.com, link is in the description of the video. You've got what is a residential drug abuse program? We got an answer for that. Can RDAP benefit? We already know that can't benefit state. We already know that. Am I automatically, if the judge recommends RDAP? Well, we got an answer for that. How does the participant successfully graduate from the program? We've got an answer for that. So we've pretty much got answers for everything on RDAP, guys. So definitely pop over to uh, federalprisontime.com. Check out the website because that could give you some information that your attorney's probably not going to give you, not because he doesn't want to, but probably because he doesn't know. It's not something he's uh, in, his, in his wheelhouse. As we know, most attorneys, from the time that you take your plea deal, they slowly start to wind down. And then once you're sentenced, once you're sentenced, they're done with you until you, I mean, they, they're still your attorney until you surrender. Like maybe you need to change your surrender date, things like this. But RDAP, it's real important that you don't, it's your, your uh, incident offense is not a violent charge. You didn't have any guns on your case. Now, many of you are like, well, I had a gun, but they dropped the gun, but I've still enhanced for the gun. That is still going to disqualify you from RDAP. And if you're sure what that means, it's probably because it doesn't, it doesn't pertain to you or you need to book a consultation to talk to me about it. Um, 
another quick, oh, another major RDAP thing that you need to understand, which we also have on the website. You'll see here if you uh, if you pop over onto the website where we talk about requirements for time to get into RDAP, right? This is a big one. Uh, let's see here. I think it's at the bottom. How much time? Okay. How much time do I get off for RDAP? So hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, so if you're sentenced to 24 to 30 months, you'll earn six month sentence reduction. If you're sentenced to 31 to 36 months, you can earn nine month sentence reduction. If you're sentenced to 37 or more, you can earn up to 12. However, it is based on when you enter the program, not just the sentence imposed. That is super important because many of you are like, oh, well, I'm sentenced to 24 months, so I can automatically get up to six months off. Not necessarily because if you get to prison, and let's say RDAP starts today and you get to prison tomorrow and the next RDAP class isn't for 60 days and you're sentenced to 24 months, you now are underneath the threshold of what you need. So it's not what you're sentenced to, it's what you have remaining on your sentence when you enter into the program. So some of the things that we do for our services is if we know you got a 24 or 25 month sentence, or if you're on the other side of it, because we know... Um, uh, uh, 30 months is the is 24 to 30 is six months. So if you're sentenced like 31 or 32 months, you're now in that nine month bracket. But again, if you get there and you got to wait a couple of months, you now might miss out in the nine months and only get six. So we have the ability to check when the next RDAP classes are starting at different facilities. And then we can find out when it's going to start. We can then prepare a letter that's going to go to your attorney that your attorney will file as a motion uh, requesting the judge to uh, change your self-surrender date, which we do all the time. Now, the judge can deny this, but in most cases, if it makes sense, most judges will go along with a surrender date change if it makes sense. And then we can coordinate this better to help you position yourself to get into the program so you can take full benefit of not just the sentence reduction, but also getting help for what you might need for your substance abuse. So that's uh, that's pretty important if you ask me. Um, so that's some RDAP information. Remember, there's links in the description of this video. We've got the website. We've got an RDAP video. So if you want to get more on that, man, go check it out. And make sure, if you haven't done so, subscribe on this channel. Give a thumbs up. Comment on the video, not just in the live chat, but comment because it does help with the algorithm. It helps to get our word out there. Helps for other people that are going through the same situation as you to find us. Uh, so disheartening when I talk to people I'm like, oh, I wish I would have found you sooner. I, I made this mistake. And I didn't talk about this. Spoke to a girl today who's sentenced to 24 months. That's her sentence. And she did not mention RDAP. And this woman is like the dispensary queen. She she runs dispensaries. She's been smoking like Snoop Dogg follows her on her Instagram. Uh, this woman is heavily involved in marijuana, but been using marijuana. But at the advice of her attorney, did not tell the probation officer. This is the same. This is the same person I spoke to today that her attorney told her she was going to go to a state prison after she was sentenced in federal court, uh, and she paid quite a bit of money for this for this federal well state. He's a regular attorney that takes federal cases, so I can't call him a federal attorney. But she's filing complaints with the bar. She's going to go online leave complaints because this really does. Uh, it doesn't none, none nothing of what this attorney did benefited this woman. Um, it created more chaos more fear, more anxiety, uh, more sleepless nights. As we know, this is something that we deal with. So guys, doing your homework and knowing what, how to hold your attorney accountable, questions to ask, uh, because you don't know what you don't know. But if you're watching RDAP Dan, you'll know what you need to know, and you'll at least be a little bit more educated in this, in this general area or very non-general area than you were prior to watching my videos. So get yourself a free consultation today, guys. The link is in the description. I feel like I drank coffee and I did not. I'm just so excited to be here with you guys on the beginning of the year. Nowhere else I'd rather be. Um, all right, check out some comments and we'll move on to part three. Um, true, Dan, my attorney told me what to do to get into RDAP. Oh, my favorite world in RDAP was let me get that. <laughs> A word, word in RDAP was let me get that. Um, Juan did RDAP as well. Juan was also one of our clients. It's nice to see our clients in here hanging out. So that should tell you something, guys. You know, after people, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, what happens after I hire somebody? Do they disappear? You know, they, here they are hanging out in uh, the chat room. Like they're spending their free time still watching RDAP Dan and they're free and clear out of prison right now. All right, going on to part three. And this, this doesn't apply to a lot of you, but you should still be very aware 
and this is pertaining to 5K1s, Rule 35, things like this. 5K1 is basically when you're when you're cooperating. Rule 35 is providing information, bringing additional cases to the Fed that they may not ever already have insight on. And make sure if you're going to do this that you know what potential precautions are because a guy I spoke to today, he's, uh, he's, he's been cooperating for quite a while, 5K1. He's also got a Rule 35. Um, he was looking at a five-year minimum mandatory, and he's now prosecution's asking for no prison time. And the news had made his case public. They posted some information on the news about his case, and some of the gangs that are involved are now looking for him, and they've already showed up at his house where his kids live. Uh, he's been hit with a baseball bat because they know that he is now turning on them and probably probably looking to cause this man serious harm, if not death. And he's terrified. If what happens if he does go to prison, if he goes to prison, he's not going to go to a camp. He's got a significant record. So he's going to be going to a medium or possibly higher, maybe a penitentiary where you got to show your paperwork and the, uh, the gangs that are out to get him are way more, uh, vibrant in the prison system than they are on the street. So if they get him in the prison system, it's going to be a lot easier to get to him with, uh, far lesser consequences than if they were to take him out on the street. So now he's going through the fear of what am I looking at? What's going to happen? My attorney didn't tell me this. You know, he was surprised how easy it was for me to look up his case. I just Googled his name and boom, found his whole case said right on there, mandatory minimum five years from when he originally got charged. Now he's looking at no time. Uh, the affiliation in the gang membership world, they're not dumb, guys. Uh, gang members, other people that have been through the system, they know if you should be in prison or not. And if you're not in prison and you're getting sentenced to a real or really short sentence or no prison time at all, it, it's a pretty clear picture of how you got that. The government's not just like, oh, you seem like a nice guy. I'm going to cut you a break. Um, so if you want more information on that, to go into a deeper dive on that, we also got a video on that. Uh, should you take a 5K1 or a Rule 35, pros and cons? We've got a video. That video is like an hour long, uh, 52 minutes. So we go over a lot of content in there. And that's an old video with CJ. You guys remember CJ? Well, that's a whole other story. We're not going to talk about that right now. But uh, if you want to know information about 5K1s, things like that, you definitely want to go check out that video, guys, because... I'm telling you, uh, it's it's things that you just don't know unless unless you've been through this. So don't think just because you're cooperating or 5K1 and they're telling you that no one's going to know this, no one's going to see your PSR. Trust me, there's ways for people to find out. Now, if if, if it's something that's no big deal, like you you know you worked for a bank or it's tax fraud or something like this, and really you're not at risk, do what you want. I'm not here to judge, but I'm just telling you to be careful if who you're telling on if they were to find out could bring uh, you or your family any type of harm or dangerous situation to where you got to up and move because uh, that can be very scary. I mean, listening to this guy talk today, you know, chased him down the street. One guy pulled a gun on him. His kid was there. So they said, wait till he catch you without your kid. Another guy caught him, beat him up with a bat, uh, you know, looking, looking to hurt this guy, possibly kill him. And that's got to be scary for anybody going through this. So do your homework on that. These are the top three tips, guys. Really hiring your attorney starts with that, knowing the difference between appointed attorney and a, and a, uh, a federal a private attorney, you know, wasting all this money on a private attorney that you a, can't afford for an attorney that's probably shouldn't be taking a private case. Um, you know, you're probably much better off with a federally appointed from the federal defender's office or an appointed attorney directly from the federal government. These are usually very, very qualified attorneys. And by doing that, that frees up your, your finances and then you can hire RDAP Dan. So, Hey, there's pros all the way across the board here. I'm no shame to ask for money. <laughs> uh, yes. As speaking of asking for money, guys, let's donate to that PayPal to help with some of those guys that are in that are going without cold weather. Let's get them some socks, some hygiene products, some deodorant, a cup of coffee, you know how good a cup of coffee is in federal prison when everyone in the unit at the dorm at night is kind of relaxing and you smell coffee floating around and you're like, man, I can't even afford a cup of coffee. Uh, these prison jobs don't pay very much. Not every, not everybody has a, is financially set while they're in prison. So if you've got the ability to help someone else, you know, you don't got to do it through here. Maybe you've got a friend or a family member in prison. Send them something. Think of them. Uh, even an email, guys, an email, a letter, getting your name called at mail call is like winning the lottery. When it's 
late at night or they're just after chow or just before chow you hear mail call and everybody's kind of sitting there being quiet when you hear your name called it could be just for a postcard and it's kind of exciting because you're getting mail you're getting something because every day is so routine so anything that breaks the routine you know you guys have the ability to you know make somebody's day just a little bit brighter um i think that's all that i got for right now guys let's go back to i didn't really know i'm still on the little screen here let's go back to dan's big old face there he is so yeah that's what i got for you guys at federalprisontime.com rdab dan anybody got any questions about any of this content before we uh before we check out of here because i do have one more consultation for the evening at 7 30 so i've got about five ten more minutes and i gotta roll out of here so I'll give you guys a minute. For those of you that joined and, and uh, engaged in the chat, thank you very much. I appreciate it. For those of you that are new to our channel, you know the, our whole channel, the content here is really focused on uh, mental preparedness, what you can do to not only shorten your sentence, but mentally prepare yourself for the journey you're about to go on and realizing you're not alone. This isn't going to define you. Your, your world is not over. Uh, there's things you can do right now that's going to make tomorrow a little bit better. And it's really just kind of learning how to deal with the anxiety in uh in small doses instead of letting it all pile up so if you can find ways to mitigate your anxiety day by day then there's things that we can do to help you potentially shorten your sentence serve the best possible sentence or the least amount of time at the best possible location and uh, finding out what you can do to help yourself all right i think that's all we got well i'm rdap dan federal prison time consulting people up and people communities method one day at a time i love you guys and i'll be back either tomorrow or wednesday with something else spicy to talk about. Probably not Jenna Ryan, though. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a great night, everybody.